it's Taryn from Taryn's Wild World and this is my very first YouTube video. Now, um, you might know me from my Facebook page, uh, also called Taryn's Wild World. Uh, I posted some videos on there and I was kind of fed up with the quality of that. So I've, I've decided to uh, go on YouTube, so welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so I decided to make my first video um, about Australian species. I've been obsessed with Australia since I was a little girl. Um, when I was 12 years old I decided to go there and uh, it finally happened when I turned 18. I told my parents goodbye and um, I went to Australia for one year. I lived there, I traveled, I worked, I just enjoyed the amazing wildlife. Uh, to me it was a dream come true and um, therefore I want to show you some of the most amazing Australian uh, snake species. So yeah, I really hope you enjoy this video. And the very first species I want to introduce to you is the rough-scaled python. This is an adult male and this is a yearling of the same species. Um, they occur in northern Australia in the Kimberleys. This area is called the Kimberleys. Um, and there are so many special things about them. Now, the, they feel really rough as the name suggests. This is probably to help them climb on the rocks. This is where they primarily live. Um, now, females get a little bit bigger than the males and uh, they primarily feed on rodents. Um, they also have a scale on top of their head that they might use um, for prey detection as it is um, sensitive to light. At least that's what uh, we think. Because not a whole lot of, is known about the species. And actually only a handful have ever been found in the wild. So it's actually really, really special that I'm holding up these um, rough scaled pythons here. And uh, yeah, it's truly a dream come true. So um, yeah, this is the rough scaled python from Australia. I'm really excited about this because this is a snake that belongs to one of my favorite genera of all time, namely Aspidiges. Um, this is a Woma python and they occur in um, many parts in Australia, about 50% of the country. And um, it's obviously a non-venomous uh, snake, that's why I can handle it like this. And there's so many interesting uh, things about this snake. Um, unlike other pythons, they don't have the heat sensitive organs around their lips. This is because they are burrowing. They also live a very secretive, secretive life. Um, that's why you really won't find them in the wild. And um, another cool fact is that they eat other reptiles, also venomous snakes. Um, and they are immune to their venom, so that's pretty cool. Um, this one is um, a, an adult. Um, in some areas of Australia they can get bigger. Um, in some areas they are uh, a bit on the smaller side like this one. And um, overall they are very very gentle as you can see. They are easy to handle. Um, but if they do bite however it can get pretty nasty. So I'm very happy that I can handle this very uh, docile uh, specimen. So yeah, this is the Roma python. I am absolutely in love. It's an amazing snake species. Um, there is one other snake in this uh, genus and uh, it looks like this one, but slightly different and I will show you in a minute. Okay, I don't know if I'm living or dying from excitement, but I'm so excited about this snake species. Um, this is the other one in the uh, genus of Aspidites. So we had the Woma python just before. This is the black-headed python. And as you can see, it looks like a Woma python that has been dipped into black paint. It just looks so stunning. Um, and this black head is very useful. They can use it for thermal regulation. And they can also use it to stay camouflaged. Um, it's an ambush predator, so it really relies on camouflation, on camouflage. And uh, this black head helps to stay hidden. Um, it's also a, a species that burrows. Um, it can get quite big. This one specifically is from the Northern Territory, so it won't get as big as the ones from other parts in Australia that can grow up to three meters. They also, like the Woman Python, can eat reptiles uh, like snakes, lizards. They're also immune to snake venom, which is very handy. And these ones occur uh, basically in the northern parts of Australia. 
and I am absolutely in love with this species, the black-headed python. It's just such a stunning snake. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, this next species is the Australian olive python. You can see why they call it the olive python. Um, it's just a brownish snake, but somehow I am absolutely in love with this species. It is just so beautiful. Um, as you can see in the sunlight, it has this iridescent sheen on its skin and it just looks amazing. It's just such a beautiful species. Uh, they occur in rocky areas and they're never far away from water. And unlike the Aspidites species that we just saw, the Woma python and the uh, black-headed python, this is an active hunter. You can also see that because of the um, heat bits in front of the nose. That's what they use to hunt. They can basically see uh, infrared. Um, so it's very easy for them to spot prey even at nighttime, which, which is their favorite time to hunt. Um, this one probably gets around three meters. There is um, a subspecies in the west of Australia that gets even bigger, even up to six meters and uh, they've been reported to eat crocodiles, snakes eating crocodiles. I mean, Australia is just an amazing, amazing country with so many amazing species. I'm in love. This is the olive python. So the next genus I will tell you a little bit more about is genus of Antheresia. There's four species in it and basically they're all small pythons. The largest one will grow up to be one meter uh, as a maximum. The rest is all under that. We've got Childrani, We've got Maculosa, we've got Stimsoni and Perthensis. I've got them all here, which is so special. And I will tell you a little bit more about them individually. So the biggest one of the bunch is this one, the Maculosa. It's also known as the Spotted Python. And what is so cool about this species is that it will hang upside down in a cave and it can catch bats, actual bats. So yeah, that's what they eat. Um, they also eat other mammals, of course. And um, like I said, it's the biggest one. Uh, usually they stay a little bit smaller than this one, but this one is from the Cape York, which is where, you know, the largest localities um, are found. So yeah, this is uh, the first and the biggest one of the four of this wonderful genus, the spotted python. So the second species in this beautiful genus is the children's python. And uh, you might think that it's called that because it's suitable for children, which it is, but it was actually named after a person called John George uh, Children. And this is how it got, it's got its name. Uh, and like the previous species, this one is also capable of catching bats, but it's an opportunistic feeder, so it will catch pretty much anything. And what's interesting about the species is that the hatchlings have a very uh, contrast-rich color pattern, and this will fade out as they mature, as you can see with this beautiful specimen. So the third snake in this uh, genus is the Stimsoni, or also known as the Stimsoni python, and they occur in a really, really big part of Australia. Now this one uh, is from the west part of its range and you can really see a high contrast color pattern while in the east it's a more faded uh, color and I would not be surprised if they you know after some taxonomic work would be divided up into uh, separate species what's really cool about this species is that the young they eat uh, when it just after they hatch they eat uh, skinks and geckos and when they mature they go over onto rodents so there's uh, definitely a difference in, uh, in diet over age and you can see it's just absolutely gorgeous snake and the last species in this genus is actually the smallest python species in the world. Um, they're called the pygmy python or the perthensis, which suggests that they come from Perth, which is not the case. It's just that the first specimen was sent from Perth. Um, they're from Pilbara. And um, as you can see, they are really tiny. This is a hatchling. This is what they look like when they're just born. They're so small and so cute. Um, and there's so many cool things about them. They live in a very, very harsh climatic um, conditions. And what they do to survive is they reside in termite mounds. Now in termite mounds, uh, you have some thermal regulation, you have enough moisture and you have ants, which attract, of course, lizards and other animals, which they can eat. So that's very handy of them. And I mean, I'm just in love with this beautiful species. I'm just gonna sh show you a little close up of, of the tiny one, I mean, I don't think you can get cuter than this, guys. So yeah, this was the last pieces of this genus. Um, yeah, the pygmy python. Awesome. Now, I started my video with a Morelia, namely the Carinata. And I'm going to end this video with a Morelia, namely the Morelia spilota chaini. And uh, I mean, just look at this beautiful snake. 
It's uh, in English. It's called a um, jungle carpet python, and this specific individual is from a place called Tully, which is a place where I lived for quite a while. So that's pretty cool. And this genus is so diverse, and there's so many beautiful snakes in there that I actually want to make uh, another video on this genus. And um, yeah, so you see more about this snake and all of its cousins in the next video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.